Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna get down to it immediately. We got a whole lot of these UFO bastards, uh, alien bozos going around and we got this clip that is also going around this one is coming from apollo 7 nasa this is an insane clip that we're going to be checking out in a second but like and subscribe and let's get down to it it's a video of a pla marine using a bird like drone that's actually flapping its wings and flying through the air now apparently china has been using drones that were character had characteristics of actual birds for quite some time to be used in urban environments because it would be like natural cover and concealment because uh, it's like hiding yeah. in plain sight because it doesn't look like a drone from far away and you wouldn't know it was a drone until you were like holding it right in front of you mm. but they could still conduct reconnaissance with it and do whatever they wanted with it Apparently back in 2018, they had a government program codenamed Pigeon, which they started creating drones that look like birds. Now, they didn't Crazy. disclose whether or not they were going to be intended for operations in urban environments, but I would I would assume that they're trying to use them in any environment where they could... To gain, like, reconnaissance and uh, to know what's going on. That That's crazy, man. If they got something like this, I, I suppose they also got, like, you know, the smaller mosquitoes, right? Yeah, what if they also got that, too? I was reading comments... People are convinced that they, you know, the smaller flies that you see, sometimes they can also be drones or maybe they have uh, made you know, something like that. Gain an advantage. Now, in 2022, engineers from uh, the Middle Kingdom created a mechanical flying bird wing. 1600 grams with a mechanical wingspan of two meters and it was powered by a lithium battery and was able to stay in the air for an hour and a half. Pretty crazy. Five absolutely mind blowing Mandela effects. Number one, okay. where's your kidneys located? Lower back or in the rib cage? Yo. It's in the rib. Oh crap! Okay, no, I'm I'm assuming right here, right? Like I I suppose like closer to the the PP area, right? Rib cage. Lower back or in the rib cage? It's in the rib cage. No, yes. so right here. I I swear to God, I thought they would be here. It's not lower back. There's no boxing kidney shot anymore. We go round the body. It's in. If you don't believe me, go Google it. Let me know. Number two, where's your heart located? Left. You said on the left hand side, then you're from the reality that I'm from, which isn't the reality we're in right now. Because the one we're in right now, it's in the center, slightly to the left, as the picture. Bonkers. Number three, let's forget about the headbands. Apparently, he never had a headband anyway, but also, this guy just died again. Richard Simmons died on the 13th of July. Five days. Okay, I, I don't know about him, uh, so. Okay. But he's died again, because if you're like me, you'll remember him dying years ago. Number four, Patrick Swayze. When did he die? Did you think he died in 2009? Same year as Michael Jackson? Just three months after Michael Jackson, in fact? Didn't happen. Didn't die that long ago. Let me know what you think. And last one. Got any uh, Wizard of Oz fans out there? Because the Scarecrow apparently had a gun. Does anybody ever remember that? The kidney one got me. Yeah. <laughs> My wife knew exactly. The the kidney one definitely, and the heart one. But but with the heart one, I'm not super shocked. But the kidney one, yeah. Where they were, but she's a nurse. The heart one, I feel like, is something you pick up as a kid from games like Operation and children's book illustrations and stuff, and then you learn as a young adult that you're misinformed. I do remember Richard Simmons wearing a headband, but he didn't pass until recently. The Patrick Swayze one, that one really threw me for a loop, so I had to go actually look that one up. And according to Google, we did lose Patrick Swayze in 2009. So this guy who made this clip may be making some of these things up. But also, the Scarecrow in The Wizard of Oz, I had to look that one up to and that one was true that's crazy totally don't remember that they're trying to make this dentist look psycho for telling people how they can prevent their cavities and strengthen their enamel with all the crap these big corporations in america are trying to sell you hear what she has uh -huh. to say see this outer hard layer the enamel of our teeth is really made up of lots of little crystals and if we can put minerals back into our teeth they will recrystallize and regrow this enamel layer that is our protection it's the covering over the outside of teeth if you have sensitive teeth this is what you need to do he goes on to talk about calcium carbonate and sodium bicarbonate calcium carbonate is actually a natural mineral that's found in rocks it helps strengthen your enamel and also neutralize the acids in your mouth to protect from cavities sodium bicarbonate helps bite your bad breath and remove any stains that you have on your teeth he's talking what? about this because so many of our department store toothpaste have harsh chemicals in them guys if you yeah. have any of these in your toothpaste you need to throw it out ASAP sodium yeah the fluoride thing right the fluoride is turning the frog yeah you know yeah yeah man. you know what alex j once said crazy right like yeah the toothpaste got it water got it a lot of things have it right 
Uh, yeah, what, what, at this point, what would piss you by then? SAP. It's so strange that none of our toothpaste have calcium carbonate and sodium bicarbonate. So that to me says that they don't want us to have it, which makes sense because the dental industry is literally going to hit $254 billion by 2032. Yeah. They want you to keep going back to the dentist. They want you to have cavities. They want you to spend your money when you can be using a more natural toothpaste that has sodium bicarbonate and calcium bicarbonate. So you're actually fighting your cavities and you have your teeth looking amazing. This makes complete sense. Mm. I was told my entire life to brush my teeth three times a day or I'd lose the enamel on my teeth. And once it's gone, you can't get it back. Then I find out as an adult that that was all complete horse crap. <laughs> so why, if they have these studies, is every toothpaste on the shelf not advertising that they have these regenerative minerals in them? It's just another example of planned obsolescence. Like yeah. them making... Oh, I'm definitely gonna go on the Amazon and like search the living crap out of the toothpaste though that she said, son absolutely right like you want to try and get the, the 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 toothpaste without fluoride in it too and like everything that she said calcium stuff as well and it, it's all about making you the customer right they do want to treat you they want to make they want to just extend it right just like because if they treat you if they give you the cure they don't want to give you the cure it's like uh they just want to delay it delay it delay it delay it so they can so you keep coming back in a dishwasher that only lasts five years and then falls apart. They want you to buy a new dishwasher every five years, just like they want you to keep going back and buying each new type of toothpaste because you haven't seemed to find one yet that actually works. Um, by the rate of Doppler change that those signals come back, we can actually gauge the speed of that aircraft. Some of the things that I witnessed that were very interesting about radar is that we would, we would be able to track um, aircraft all the way down to the ground and I do mean all the way down to the ground at, at distances of around 100 miles. And now that I know the calculation curvature, 100 miles is 6,666 feet of curvature, of drop. That is literally impossible because radar works at microwave frequencies, 2 to 6 gigahertz or, or even higher, anywhere in the microwave spectrum. And it is absolutely reliant on it being line of sight. Meaning, if you can't see it, it don't work. When you take into consideration that we're able to track aircraft from, you know, whatever altitude they're coming in at, all the way down to the ground at a target 100 miles away, and knowing that that, should, that target should be 6,000 plus foot below the curvature, that kind of eliminates the ball model. <laughs> Well, you know, in air traffic control, they have two different types of radar. There's a short range, but uh, airport based radar goes out to 60 miles. And then for the long uh, flights, high altitude and off coast, it can go out to, it's in route radar and it can be 200 miles. So they can detect targets 200 miles away. So in radar, the point is it has to be able to have a direct line to the airplane. Okay. So, with regards to the shape of the Earth, I never thought about it as I worked for 24 years. You didn't say, wait a minute, I think that target is too low for me to see that distance. Nobody ever even thinks about that. But in reality, now knowing what must be if we live on a ball, the fact is that uh, at even just 180 miles, any airplane below 26,000 feet Okay. If the radar can see it, the Earth is not a ball. Period. End of story. And does that happen very often? A thousand times plus a day. A thousand times plus a day. Somebody calls up. Somebody comes from offshore. There's a whole class of aircraft that are not pressurized. They can't fly above 11,000 feet. The pilot will pass out. So they operate at and below 10,000 feet, no matter what, and no matter what the weather is. They just can't operate up there. And there's hundreds of thousands, if not millions of these airplanes still operating all the time. Wow. And so they're be coming in at 6,000, 7,000, 8,000 feet from like Bermuda or beyond and say 180 miles from Miami. And I said, Roger. And every time they do that, they prove the earth is flat. And they don't know it. But it's absolute undeniable oh, proof. Twenty-six thousand, and at two hundred miles, twenty-nine thousand. I mean, those a lot of commercial flights are never at twenty-nine thousand coming in from two hundred miles out. So, 
over and over again. I don't really have... To be honest though, like, okay, half of it through when uh, you probably saw me making those kind of faces, right? At that point, in my mind, I was thinking that, is this going towards Flat Earth conspiracy? And it did after that. Holy crap, it's like everything is kind of linked with that right now, bro. What is going on, bro? I have a lot to add on this. I just thought that this was another example of flat earth evidence that I can't seem to explain away. Does anyone yeah. have an explanation on this one? I know we've got some people in the audience who really don't like it whenever I post any kind of flat earth stuff in these videos. <laughs> Y'all specifically, can you leave a comment? Uh, personally, like, uh, I believe that the earth is round. Okay, that's what I believe. Yeah, not the coolest thing to say uh, nowadays, but if you believe the, fl the earth is flat, that's perfectly fine by me. I got no issue with that, right? But I believe the earth is round uh but but i still don't mind these videos it's conspiratorial and uh, we're here to watch conspiracies man so yeah yeah man and yeah. make this one make sense to me commissioned by pope paul the sixth in 1965 and completed in 1977 la resurrezione is a dramatic depiction of christ rising from the turmoil of an atomic explosion at 66 feet wide and 23 feet high this sculpture dominates the stage of the Pope Paul VI audience hall, serving as a backdrop for papal audiences and significant events. Pericle Fazzini, known for his dynamic and expressive style, was chosen for this project. His vision, he claimed, was to create a sculpture that not only embodied the resurrection of Christ, but also resonated with the contemporary world, a world shadowed by the threat of nuclear destruction. The figure of Christ, cast in bronze, emerges from the abstract chaos with an almost expressionless face. His outstretched arms and upward gaze draw the viewer's eyes towards the heavens. Fazzini's work, while undeniably bold, can be polarizing. The chaotic forms and the depiction of an atomic explosion as the backdrop for Christ's resurrection are jarring for those accustomed to more classical interpretations. Something is going on with the Catholic Church. I don't mean to offend any Catholics that we have watching, but y'all's Pope and all the upper management seem about as corrupt as the ruling class here in America. It looks like the leaders of the church need to start following the teaching. Follow, uh, follow the follow God, not the the uh, follow God, not humanity. Simple as that. That's what I would say, right? Like human, yeah. Follow God, not humanity. Don't follow these leaders blindly to the church. There's just no reasonable explanation for spending church funds to commission a statue of a disfigured, mutilated-looking Jesus. Anyone with the slightest bit of common sense can see how that's in poor taste. Good afternoon. My name is Jerome Nelson. From 1962 to 1965, I was an Atlas F-ICBM Deputy Missile Combat Crew Commander assigned to the 579th Strategic Missile Squadron in Roswell, New Mexico. Sometime during the winter of 1963 through 1964, while I was on alert duty in the Launch Control Center at Atlas Site 9 west of Roswell, my top side security guard called me on the telephone and reported a bright light that is a f that is, a fully illuminated round object was hovering silently over the missile silo and shining a light down onto it. I could tell that he was serious and his voice revealed he was very frightened. After perhaps five minutes, the object left the vicinity. Even before it left, I called the base command post at Walker Air Force Base and reported the incident. I was concerned the object would somehow sabotage the missile. I was surprised by the response I received, being told that the command post would take on un the unauthorized excursion under advisement. I was never debriefed by my commander or anyone else, which I found quite puzzling and frustrating. Over the next month or so, this type of incident occurred several more times while I was on duty at Site 9. I would estimate the total number as more than three, but fewer than ten. On each occasion, I would call the command post, but each time my report was met with the same apparent indifference. During each of these incidents, I witnessed the guard would call 
to launch control center and report the UFO. Several guards were involved over time and were all obviously frightened by the object hovering over the site. Hmm. So this is like one of those uh, nuclear site kind of thing, right? Because when he said Roswell, instantly my mind went to that 47 crash thing, right? They, that, that they said uh, it was, uh, first they said that it was a UFO crash, then they said balloon, this and that. The military gave their response and it, it really got messy, right? It really got messy. That happened 47-ish uh, kind of, right? He's talking about 63. And I did hear stories of uh, the, the aliens uh, stopping the, the nukes, uh, the, the, the missiles and all that. I think this is his testimony about that. Their voices were actually trembling for the sight. Their voices were actually trembling. Because of my duties in the launch control center, I could not go topside and look at the objects myself. Only decades later that I did I learn that at least one missile facility technician Bob Kaplan had been ordered to report to the Office of Special Investigations on base and make a report about the similar incident he had witnessed at Site 9 during the period. At the time, this development was kept from me and my missile commander. I do not know whether anyone else was interviewed by the OSI, but I wasn't. That's my report. He so, don't. all the way back in 1963, we had reports being sent up the chain of command about UFOs. And all the way back in 1963, we had the lower level military guys being flat out ignored when they made these reports. What this says to me is that all the way back in 1963, the government already knew what those shining lights in the sky were, mm. and they weren't worried about it. That's why they never followed up with those guys. They yeah. weren't interested in what they had to say because they already knew what was going on. Okay, we did. Th that's crazy, right? So they were. Looks like that they were not concerned about it. Yeah, right. It feels like that they were not concerned about it. So that means uh, that were they in contact with them, and the aliens assured them that nothing's gonna be bad, or they were like, uh, we, "We need to work on this behind the scenes in secrecy." Why so many Gen Zers, Gen Zers, and millennials have money? Dysmorphia. Need to talk about this for a second. So many Gen Zers and Millennials have money dysmorphia, even if they're financially better off than they realize. I have been seeing all of these articles talking about how Millennials and Gen Z have money dysmorphia. Money dysmorphia traps Millennials and Gen Zers. I feel like there's like this weird financial gaslighting that's going on right now like this. Millennials and Gen Zers keep hearing how tough we have it, how hard and expensive it is to buy a home, how much it costs to raise children and secure yeah. childcare. Yeah. Trust me, we're not just hearing about it, we're freaking living it. Like, is this really saying that people are worried about housing prices because we hear about it, not because we cannot afford housing? No, bro, we're experiencing it. These headlines can easily overshower the reality that the U.S. economy is pretty healthy. Yeah, not for us. 90% of the wealth is held by Gen X, baby boomers, and older. Glad everything's working out for you guys, but nothing yeah. is affordable for us. I said that in one of the recent videos, I was watching a video on Facebook, and there was a guy that actually bought like a really good villa-like mansion. It was beautiful. It was amazing in Africa for less than 200,000 U.S. dollars. For 200 grand dog <laughs> you don't get anything here bro it is it is crazy man it is it is crazy so uh my generation is gonna have a real tough time bro i think the saddest thing about this though is they're saying 45 percent of millennials and gen z that were surveyed reported being obsessed with becoming rich and if you don't think that's correlated to the fact that millennials and gen z have the highest rate of depression I yeah stop instagram man instagram and also there are a lot of uh, influencers uh, saying that, hey man, get rich quick, man. This is the coin that I invested in. This is that coin that I invested in. You do that, you do the same, buy my course, you will be rich too, and I stop believing the lies. I don't know what to tell you. It just sucks because we live in this weird paradox where it's like, you're gonna be happier if you don't stress about money, but you have to pay to survive, and so you need to stress about money or else you're gonna be homeless and you're gonna die. But I just can't, I just can't get over this gaslighting. We're just hearing how tough it is. Every I mean, he ain't wrong. And I want to show you this video too. Check this out. Roll it. Discovered it back in January 19, 2015. This is a UFO from the Apollo 7 launch of October 11, 1968. Look at that object out there. That This is AI. This is corrected by AI. This is before AI. 
This is corrected by AI. Isn't that amazing? Okay, this is my UFO Sightings Daily website with a post, so you can see it. I'm going to put the links to two of these photos in the About section below the video, so you can make your own videos, TikToks, Instagram, whatever you want. Just share the information because that's what we have to do. If we want the yeah, truth to come out, yeah. it's going to have to come from us. Shout, shout out to UFO Sightings Daily. Love the guy. Love the channel. Uh, absolutely. Uh, and his website is so like old school. It reminds me of like 2006, the first time when I hopped on the internet. And, uh, you know, back in the days, you would have to use DVDs to install internet, right? Uh, there was some weird stuff about like, uh, I, I was uh, connect. I'm in Montreal. So we had like Bell internet back then and it would come in like a case uh, you would install, then you would have to put codes like my memory is foggier than Snoop Dogg's bathroom. I get that. But something along those lines, you would have to install the internet. Nowadays, it's just plug and play, baby. Or go wireless, baby. That's as uh, simple as that. Not NASA. Okay, look at this. That is the full photo right there. And these are small clips of the different photos in the row. Here is the actual NASA site. And this is what one of the links will take you to. And you just uh, pick up the photo, drop it, or download it if you can find the download button. This is what it looks like after AI has corrected two times. Uh, okay. This it looks pretty good over here. Look at the difference in the clouds, the texture. Obviously, the right side is doing a good job at focusing AI. Now, on the left, you see AI1. It's been corrected the first time. On the second time, you see AI2. It looks like it's kind of blurring a little bit, losing a little bit of a detail. But it, obviously, it is a little bit, uh, <laughs> well, blue. Now, we've seen blue UFOs yeah, before, that? and I showed you one from Apollo uh, mission just a few days ago. So if you go back like four or five videos, you'll see another UFO that is from the Apollo mission, and it is the same color. You say, well, alien UFOs won't look like that. Aliens are not us. They're different species. Even if they're human-like, human-like doesn't mean human. So yeah. don't expect them out there to do to the same like things us. that we do. Yeah, to look like us or to be doing the same thing as us. Yeah, exactly. And this is why I always say, uh, right, like some people believe that uh, they, they are light years ahead. Maybe they are light years ahead, but there's got to be some aspects for them where they are not light years ahead and they're perhaps far behind in comparison to us. Because, uh, yeah, I I'm assuming in some aspects they probably are light years ahead uh, of us, but we're all thinking with our human minds so these species these things probably not thinking the same way we think as well and what's going to happen when we meet them for the first time i mean conspiracies are crazy of course they do say that they have been here and you know government has been in contact with them if that's true that's true but listen let's just say that's not true uh, or let's just say it's true right like so how did you guys communicate okay telepathic communication maybe but what if that's not true? Like, do they speak at all? What do they speak? Do they understand e English? English? Do they st uh, do they understand English? That that's the thing because it's gonna be ludicrous to assume that the, uh, you speaking English and you can communicate with them in English, right? It's ludicrous. Uh, or perhaps they really can telepathically uh, communicate with us, and maybe perhaps they can download a language just by being on our planet just by scanning you downloading your language and speaking the way you speak so it's easier to communicate maybe i'm just throwing it out there i'm just spitballing there but let me know your thoughts check out this video on the screen this is the last episode that we've done if you enjoyed this you're gonna love this one if you already seen it then check out the video on the left